this video, I'm going to do a little bit of technical troubleshooting related to the rendering of large mesh objects within the Power BI environment using the Tracer add-in. For a little bit of context, I have exported a model here uh, that is inclusive of a series of floor plates and columns um, captured in this view. And these have been exported to a SQLite database um, and referenced into the Power BI environment. Uh, so you can see that we have an element record table being referenced here that has information about element category, um, as well as geometric information related to the mesh. If I jump over to the data tab, you can see that under the mesh field, we have these very long strings of data being captured. Um, this is essentially capturing an element record and the mesh field is storing a GLTF string of information. Now, what we do with this GLTF is using the Power BI 3D viewer um, is we assign this mesh to the viewer and the mesh is then rendered um, dynamically from these individual fields. Um, one of the challenges that we encounter with regards to rendering of meshes is a character limit that is inherent within the Power BI report environment and how much data is loaded within a single field. So there is a character limit on these data fields um, that equates to 32,766 characters. So if you have a string that is longer than that, a bit of text that has more than 32,766 characters, um, Power BI is silently going to truncate that data in the background, which can make it problematic for recalling information out of a field here. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is pull the mesh field into the geometry input. And what we're going to be able to see is the um, information doesn't seem as complete as what we saw in Revit. So as I spin around here, you can see that it's missing um, a lot of the floor plates in this middle section. Some of the floor plates are displaying. You can see that we have an artifact, um, a set of artifacts here of smaller floor plates plates at the mezzanine level uh, that, have, that are in the model, but there's a, a whole section of floor plates that aren't being visualized here. We're also getting this warning in the visual that said it was, it's failing to parse some data. This is because a number of these meshes are getting truncated by Power BI behind the scenes, um, but luckily there is a workflow that allows us to resolve this and overcome that character limit, but it does require a little bit of data wrangling using Power BI's uh, Power Query um, Transformation Editor. So if I click on Transform Data, this is going to jump me into the Power Query Editor. And this is where different transformations can be applied to your data um, after it's been loaded into Power BI. So one of the interesting things about this is that the entirety of that mesh string is being loaded into Power BI. It's just that that report environment is having trouble going beyond that character limit. So one of the ways that we can get around that is by splitting this column of mesh data into multiple different columns and loading up um, that, that information uh, into the Power BI environment so we're not getting that truncating effect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my mesh field that has these long character strings here, and I'm going to do a split column operation, um, and I'm going to split it by number of characters. And what I want to do here is insert the maximum number of characters that any given column should contain. So in this case, I'm going to sh shoot for 32,766 characters. And I'm going to ask Power BI to split this column repeatedly um, until uh, this character limit is um, satisfied. We have the entirety of the mesh represented. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see that it has split the mesh column into mesh column 1 and mesh column 2 and that we have a, a few objects in here that have a continuation of the GLTF character string from one column to another. Um, and after I've made this change, what I'm going to go ahead and do is choose Close and Apply. What this is going to do is it's going to reload this data into the Power BI environment. But instead of one mesh field, we're going to have two mesh fields, a mesh one and a mesh two. And you can see that this um, visual has now become inactive because um, the previous mesh field no longer exists. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that geometry input out a bit. Um, 
But now that I'm in the report environment, there, the workaround here is to say, okay, well, I need to load in um, these meshes, but they, they do need to combine, be combined into a single GLTF string. So what I can do is go to a new column, and then I'm going to use the um, uh, essentially the DAX uh, editor here to concatenate mesh one and mesh two into a single column. And this allows us to kind of work around that initial character limit loading. So I'm going to create a new mesh column. The name is going to be mesh and I'm going to do concatenate. And I'm going to concatenate mesh one uh, with mesh two. So I have a, now a complete uh, formula there. And this is going to create a new mesh column for us. And this mesh column is now going to be the object that I load into this uh, geometry field here. So I'm going to drag that in. And what we're going to see is that now uh, that we've concatenated those strings together, um, Power BI is now successfully able to load in um, those higher poly mesh objects that were failing to render before because of the exceeding of the character limit. So it definitely is a workaround. Um, it's a bit of technical troubleshooting. So the, the lesson learned here is that Power BI can only uh, load in a field that has a certain character limit, in this case, 32,766 characters. Um, but what we can do to work around that is split a single long text column up into several columns load those in to the Power BI field editor, and then concatenate them together back into a single mesh string, which then allows us to uh, view those very long, um, very large, you know, those larger meshes in the viewer. So hopefully this is a useful bit of troubleshooting um, and gives you a little bit of the inner workings of Power BI and some of the limitations of how it loads data into this environment. Um, and hopefully this workaround is useful in helping you parse out and render larger meshes uh, with the tracer add-in.